Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now, about five years ago, I released a video called Top 10 PSP Racing Games. And at the time, I wasn't really very happy with that video because I didn't have a lot of games to choose from in my collection at the time. And also my game capture was pretty terrible. Now, fast forward five years and my PSP Racing collection has grown to be well over 30 games. And also I can capture the footage much better now. So I thought it might be kind of fun to revisit the racing genre on the PSP. You guys know that I love that handheld. So in this video, I'm gonna show you all the games that I have in my collection, as well as gameplay for almost all of them. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, baby, you know that I love the Burnout games and the PSP got two really great ones. The first one that came out is called Burnout Legends. And the reason why it's called Legends is because basically it's a best of the first three Burnout games that came out on consoles. But it was put on a portable device without sacrificing really any of the speed or chaos of the original versions. And it feels really great playing it on the PSP, even though you have that smaller screen. A little bit later, we got Burnout Dominator. Now what's cool about this is that it's an all original Burnout game specifically designed for the PSP. Some changes to this sequel is that it has slightly improved graphics. You can see a little bit more detail in the background there and also they tweaked the gameplay a bit. Specifically, burnouts are back in the game, which is great, meaning that if you can drain the entire boost without crashing, then you can chain them together, basically boosting for huge sections of the race. However, they did remove crash mode from this version, which kinda sucks, because I always love crash mode. It's also important to know that they did port this eventually to the PlayStation 2, so you can play it there. I think for me at the time, when I first got the PSP and played a proper Burnout game on it, without really any compromises, I was blown away, and I still am. These are great games. Test Drive Unlimited is a game that I never really expected to see on the PSP, because the game is, well, it's an impressive open world racing game that just happens to fit on the UMD. Now, when I say open world, this game is very impressive because it's actually modeled after the Hawaiian island of Oahu and has over a thousand miles of roads on it and almost no load screens. Has pretty great graphics for a handheld as well. Now, I like the arcade control here. This is my kind of arcade game because the cars feel light and responsive. I'm not really a huge fan of arcade racing games where the cars feel heavy and kind of sluggish. This is my kind of arcade racing game here. Basically in this game, you just drive around Hawaii, exploring the island, buying houses, and adding more cars to your collection, and hopefully winning races. Oh yeah, baby, here is a great PSP racing game. This is MotorStorm Arctic Edge. Now this game comes up in a lot of conversations as being potentially one of the best looking PSP games ever made. And I would have to agree, it's a, it's a really well-made game. But one of the things that people kind of knock against it, and I tend to agree, is that the controls are a little on the floaty side, but after a couple races, you do get used to it. There's also a wide variety of vehicles to choose from, including motorcycles, quad runners, big rig trucks, dune buggies, and much more. I like how each of the massive levels has multiple ways to race through it and shortcuts to discover, some of them specific to a certain type of vehicle, meaning that a particular path might actually make more sense for a motorcycle to go through it than say a lumbering semi truck. And this game, like many other racing games, has a pretty cool licensed soundtrack by bands like Bullet For My Valentine, The Prodigy, Motorhead, The Hives, 
Queens of the Stone Age is on here, Radiohead, stuff like that. Although I will say that in this particular video to avoid a copyright claim, I'm, I'm muting all of that. So, but just be aware that a lot of these racing games have awesome soundtracks. Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast, yet another fantastic arcade racing game on the mighty PSP. Being an arcade racing game, as you see from the footage here, it has super tight controls and a great sense of speed. Now, don't get me wrong, as a kid, I did enjoy the original Outrun in the arcades, but I have to say, I actually prefer this version over that because there's just more depth to it. It just feels like a better racing game. One of the things I like about this is that there's a mode where your girlfriend who is in the passenger seat will call out real-time challenges that you need to do during the race. And then at the end of each section, you're ranked on how well you did them. It's a really fun addition to this game. Now, obviously you have the traditional racing mode, but there's just a whole package here that's just fantastic to discover. When the PSP came out, one of the launch titles was Wipeout Pure, a fantastic game that really showed off the power of that handheld. However, I'm gonna move on to the sequel, which is Wipeout Pulse. Now this game came out two years after the original and was an excellent game in its own right. If you are familiar with pretty much any PlayStation console, well then of course you've probably played a Wipeout game. So I don't need to tell you that these games have great graphics, excellent control, and also an awesome sense of speed. I especially like the mode where you try to survive as long as you can while you're racing through different zones and your vehicle keeps automatically speeding up. You basically go faster and faster until you just can't take it anymore and your, your vehicle just explodes. As you can see by this footage, they look and play great on the PSP, but if you want to play them on the newer PlayStation 4, they included this content in the Wipeout Omega Collection. Definitely worth checking out. Race complete. Now let's move on to some games that are a little less arcadey and more simulator. I think the first one I'm going to talk about is Race Driver 2006 by Codemasters. Codemasters has a long history of releasing simulation style racing games. That includes like the F1 series, Dirt series, Grid, stuff like that. So it was cool to see a proper simulation game released for the PSP. It's kind of interesting to learn that this was actually developed by Sumo Digital. That's the same developer that also made Outrun 2006. It's also interesting to note that this game was released in 2006. A lot of people were waiting for a proper Gran Turismo game, but they would have to wait three more years until 2009 to get one. So for many years, this was the best way to play a proper racing sim on the PlayStation Portable. And once 2009 came around, well, the highly anticipated Gran Turismo was finally released on the PSP. I know for me personally, it did feel like a long wait at the time, but at least the game was very polished. Like other Gran Turismo games, in this one you have approximately 800 licensed cars to collect. However, there's no proper career mode, which is kind of disappointing. But as you can see, the graphics are just excellent and definitely a step up from Race Driver 2006. They seem to be running at a rock solid 60 frames a second. Despite some features being scaled back from the console versions, I still think this is an absolute joy to play. Here is SBK Superbike World Championship. Oh man, full disclosure, I am pretty terrible at these motorcycle racing games, especially when they're more simulation based. So basically you're gonna see a lot of footage of me crashing or flying off into the, uh, the weeds there. So I have to apologize, I don't have a lot to say about this one, but if you're into this kind of sport, well, people seem to like this one a lot. And then we're gonna take a look at a couple rally games. Now the first one being FIA World Rally Championship. I haven't played it very much because I just got it. So I'm gonna quickly move on to one I have played and that is Sega Rally Revo. This is an off-road rally game that is the fourth game in the Sega Rally series. What's kind of interesting about this game is that it's developed by Bugbear. That's the same developer that makes the Flat Out series. Which explains why the physics in this game are so good because that developer they are just masters of that. Now, I'm not gonna claim that I'm an expert at these rally dirt racing games, but I do enjoy them quite a bit, and this is definitely a good one.
The PSP was home to a bunch of Need for Speed games, and all of them are pretty decent, but my favorite would have to be Need for Speed Carbon Own the City. The reason this is my favorite is because it has this really cool mechanic where you have crew members that are racing along with you, and they each have different abilities that can help you in real time. For instance, one of your crew members can be an assassin, where they can lay down spikes in front of a rival racer and then blow out their tires. Or there is a brawler that can knock somebody out of the way, or you have a crew member that can allow you to slipstream behind them and then gain a speed advantage. Honestly, controlling these wingmen kind of reminds me of playing classic Wing Commander, but in a racing game. Plus, you level up your crew, which makes it feel a little bit like an RPG. The graphics are a bit dark and muddy because it's an early PSP game, but trust me, it's still really fun. Ridge Racer does not need any introduction to fans of the PSP because it was a launch title in North America and a very good version of it. And no other arcade racing game feels quite like Ridge Racer. It's definitely unique. I mean, it's all about drifting to build up your boost so that you can use your nitrous. But again, there's just something very unique about the way that Ridge Racer controls. And on the PSP, it feels really great, especially considering that it's a small screen. And it has a rock solid frame rate and great graphics for the time. It really showed off the PSP nicely. I've heard that there's a sequel that was released outside the US, but sadly we didn't get a physical copy here and I've never played it. So if you have, let me know down in the comments below. The PSP got two Midnight Club games. The first one being Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition, which was frankly, notoriously terrible. So I'm gonna move on to its sequel, and that is Midnight Club LA Remix. So being the second game on the PSP, thankfully Rockstar fixed almost all of the annoyances of the previous game. In the sequel, they were able to shorten the load times, which frankly was terrible in the previous version. They also brighten up the graphics a bit, they have better frame rates, and also the controls are tighter. It's funny because I do like the Midnight Club games, but I find them very frustrating. I don't think I've finished any of them because either it's the level design is just unforgiving or the AI is brutally difficult. I don't know what it is, but they're games that I want to love, but I just can't for some reason. There are two Pursuit Force games that are exclusive to the PSP. Now, somehow I lost the original game, so in this video, I'm just gonna talk about the sequel. You need to think of these games almost like cheesy 80s action cop movies, but in video game form. In this game, you zip around levels trying to catch up with the bad guys, but then when you do, you can hop out of your vehicle and then jump over to the enemy's vehicle and try to commandeer it. And it's pretty cool too, because you'll be holding on to their car, dodging bullets, trying to shoot the guy who's hanging out the window. And then basically, once the driver's killed, you can get into the driver's seat and then just continue on the way. But because it is a racing game, there is a limit to the level. So if you take too long, well, the enemy might get away. So you can almost think of it as like a timer, but basically it really keeps you on your toes. Now the sequel added sections that are on foot where you're not in a vehicle. And admittedly, they're not my favorite, but they do break up the game. That said, I would love to see this franchise get rebooted in some way. Here is a racing game that is based on a popular Pixar movie and to everyone's surprise, it doesn't suck. Actually, it's a total hidden gem. As you might imagine, this is an arcade racing game that mixes in fantasy and personality from the movie so that each car has its own power-ups with its own abilities. Now, some of these abilities are like the jump mechanic that you see where you can hop over into like special areas or jump fences, things like that. And the controls are tight, but they feel unique in its own way, especially the drifting mechanic. You know, at first it can be a little bit off-putting because it's different than all the other games in this video, 
but when you play it a lot, it actually is pretty forgiving. And as you can see from this footage, the tracks are very colorful. There's also a lot of hidden wrenches that you need to find that you can use to do upgrades. For a licensed kids game, this is way better than it should be and definitely should not be missed. Juiced 1 and 2. So these games were released at a time when a lot of developers were trying to create their own brand of tuner themed arcade racing games. I mean, you know, back then it's like the Need for Speed Underground series was taken off and everybody wanted to do that. I'll be honest with you, these games, while they're not really anything special, they aren't particularly bad either. I mean, I would go so far to say is that if you've already exhausted all the other Need for Speed games on your PSP, well, you could certainly do worse than the Juice games. Split Second. Seems like I talk about this a lot, but it's primarily because, well, it's a pretty awesome game that a lot of people have forgotten about, and the PSP port is pretty cool. So what is Split Second? Well, as you can see here, it's a bit of a futuristic car combat slash racing game. It feels an awful lot like Burnout, and that's definitely a good thing. And like in Burnout, it kind of rewards you for driving recklessly. For instance, you'll notice as I'm drifting around this track here that you're building up that little meter underneath your car there. There's actually three levels that you can build up to. And what it does is gives you the ability to trigger the environment to take out your rivals, or sometimes you can open new paths. Really, it's about risk versus reward here. You want to build that up as much as you possibly can to do as much damage as possible. I really like the futuristic design of this game, and it looks great on the PSP. Now, I'm not going to lie, it's definitely a difficult game, but certainly unique and a lot of fun, worth a look. Here is Flat Out Head On. Now this is based on the third game of the beloved series that a lot of people played on the original Xbox as well as the PS2. The series is notable for being a little bit more physics based with the driving model. Now I have to be honest, I'm, I don't know, I struggle with it a little bit. Sometimes I like it, other times I'm just, I feel like I'm fighting with it, but it's cool because they're completely over the top and they're definitely crazy fun. Not really much to say about Street Supremacy here. It's part of the Tokyo Extreme Racer series that got its start on the Dreamcast. Now, these are based on kind of highway racing culture in Japan. I'll be honest with you, it's not necessarily a terrible game, but it's not one of my favorites either. I think it's just okay. As we get towards these last ones here, I'm going to go a little bit quicker. So, this game here is called Rush, but in other parts of the world, it's actually known as LA Rush. And it's a cool arcade racing game. It focuses mostly on destructible environments and over-the-top action. There were a bunch of ATV games released on the PSP, and I have three of them here. And not much to say about these other than if you like quad runners or motorcycles or just racing through dirt, well, these are going to be for you. But honestly, I haven't played them a ton yet. This is Initial D Street Stage, and you may notice that this is actually a Japanese import. So the Initial D games, not necessarily popular over here in North America, but in Japan, they're extremely popular. And what makes them kind of unique is that they're very story-driven street racing games based on a popular manga series. However, because this is a Japanese release, it is a bit hard for me to follow because I don't read Japanese, so all the story elements are kind of lost on me. Hot Wheels Ultimate Racing. This game is often compared to F-Zero, but obviously with, well, Hot Wheels. And probably the biggest complaint with this game is that it's notoriously, brutally difficult. So, fair warning. Full Auto 2 Battle Lines. This is the portable version of the PlayStation 3 game. And it's kind of forgettable. It's a racing car combat game that's just meh. Here is an interesting release on the PSP. This is Crazy Taxi Fair Wars. And this was exclusive to the PSP. Now what this is, it's a mix of Crazy Taxi 1 and Crazy Taxi 2, plus there's a new mode that lets you compete with real world opponents via ad hoc, and then you compete for customer fares. That's actually a pretty cool feature. So that's a quick look at the PSP racing games that I have in my collection, and as you can see there, 
Developers really embraced this handheld. I love collecting racing games on the PSP because as you can see, so many of them are awesome, but I didn't cover them all. These are just the ones that I have in my collection. Now, according to sites like Metacritic, there looks to be about say 50 or 55 racing games that were released on the PSP. Pretty cool, right? Love to know which ones you think I missed in this video and that I need to add to my collection. Please let me know down in the comments below. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.